check out ESPN Films' newly released 30 for 30 podcasts. From the producers of our award-winning documentary series, this is an amazing collection of sports stories you need to hear to believe. Speaking of amazing, Delta Airlines and the Fly Delta app make your travel experience amazingly easy with real-time bag tracking, e-boarding, and passport scanning during check-in. And don't forget to download 30 for 30 podcasts to fill your flight with stories that will keep you coming back for more. And now, Jalen and Jacoby on ESPN Radio. When I pop the trunk, head the dirt. Y'all pop the trunk, I pop the hood. Now act stupid, I'll pop the trunk. Now give me your po-po, po-po. He is Jalen Rose. What up? No, I'm David Jacoby. And on the cool check-in. Center stage on the mic. And we putting it on wax. It's the new style. We're Jalen Jacoby on ESPN2 and ESPN Radio. What do we do? We give the people a dope pod to step to consistently for six years, along with radio and television. The second most handsome duo in the industry. Yep. Next to? Tony and Mike. Pardon Shout the interruption. Out. Jalen Rose, we always what give the people that? a dope pod to step to. So much has happened since we last had a pod on Wednesday. I don't even know where to start. Woj dropped the bomb earlier on Monday. David Fisdale is out as the head coach of the Memphis Grizzlies. I am shocked by this. What is your reaction to this move by the Grizzlies? I feel the exact same way that you do because he's one of the best bright young minds in the game. He did a terrific job with that squad last year that dealt with injury. They outplayed expectation, put himself in the coach of the year conversation. They came back this year compared to the opponent with another overall other than Gasol and Mike Conley, players that were considered fringe starters. What was going to happen with Chandler Parsons and his return and his injury? Can he play up to contractual expectations So at the beginning of the year, they were basically a surprise. Mm -hmm. They weren't a team that I gave a lot of expectations to because he was coaching that squad up. And so for him to decide to bench Mark Gasol late in the basketball game, Gasol to come out and talk about it publicly, it seems like the star player wins out versus the head coach. But overall, I think the franchise loses because in that dynamic, You want to try to keep both of those guys happy because they're both terrific at what they do. I think that we are going to see a lot of follow-up reports on this. I can't imagine it's just as simple as, oh, you bench Marcus Saul, he complained, and now you're fired. I think there's a lot going on behind the scenes that we don't know about that we will find out about soon. I wish Coach Fisdale the best in his next endeavor. But... We're always going to give the people what they want. We are going to open up our voicemail line and go into our subreddit. Can I dress up for the pod audience real quick? Please See, hit I'm the break. Let me go I'm, the I'm rail speaking. for 30 I was, seconds. I was speaking. I was speaking. But was the speaking. people, this is, this is why you come to the pod. Yes. I literally was on Sports Center right before I saw Joel Embiid come on and give me a shout as he referenced 81. This is what I'm going to say about that. I've been one of the multimedia personalities that have been enthusiastic about this young man since he was in college. Talking about he reminded me of Akeem the Dream. He could turn over both shoulders. I like the fact that he was a lumberer and threw his knees around and his elbows around. Had a major personality. The town was going to fall in love with him. He could shoot the three. He could block shots. And when Ben Simmons returns... They're going to be what is is everything I said, Jacoby. A problem. What did I say? A problem for the league. So I've been saying this for like three years, and he hasn't played 82 full games yet. So here's what I have to say in response. I respect the young fella. I want to see him do well, but he ain't a vet yet. So I'm just going to fall back and let them cook, let him do his thing, and see how the process turns out. All respect. No doubt. I hope everyone enjoyed their Thanksgiving weekend, but something happened over the weekend, and we need you to take us behind the curtain. 
Giannis Antetokounmpo and the Bucks had high expectations for themselves and by others as the season started. They've now lost three of four. Things are getting a little rocky. It looks like it's getting to their star player, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Here you can see him physically threatening an assistant coach on the sideline. Jalen, take us behind the curtain. We know that there's arguments between coaches and players all the time, but does it ever escalate to this? You alluded to the frustration that he's dealing with. High expectations of a young team hoping to go to the next level as he vaults himself from all-star to all-NBA to now MVP candidacy. They're on the road in Utah. He was driving to the basket, felt like he didn't get the call, missed a short shot. He was driving on the right side, got a turnover. Before you know it, in transition, his team gives up an open dunk. So just like any parent that's on their child or their scholar, as we like to call them at JRLA, Shout out. when you don't take care of your business, your teachers, your parents, your deans, everybody's going to get on you. And I'm sure at that point he came to the huddle and teammates were barking and mumbling. The coaching staff was barking and mumbling. And then that one annoying voice that he just didn't want to hear at that time, he's like, oh, I'm tired of this. You know what? That's enough. And so really that's what that was, more so than him actually physically wanted to have an altercation with the coach. Well, of course, he's, you know, he's talked about it. and People have asked him about it. And now he said, oh, it's no big deal. That's what me and Coach Sweeney always do. We're like brothers. We argue. But, Jalen, to say I'll bleep you up seems to be like a level up than what you normally see between brothers that argue a lot. Isn't that true? This is the exact same reason I stopped cursing <laughs> because of what you're doing right now. You put it on the scale and you try to judge yes. the inflection, yes. the body yes. language, yes. the tone. That's How exactly you what I do. That's was exactly it one what I'm word? doing. Was it multiple words? Me and words? you argue was all the, the time. First word? We don't was threaten each other. Word? Me That's and you argue all the time up. and we never threaten each other. We never threaten each other. Like I say, I'll bleep you up in the huddle on the sideline of a game. He's like, oh, we do that all the time, but this one just happened to be seen on national television. But me and you don't care enough about our, our jobs as we should. <laughs> so, therefore, when we disagree, we're not upset. We're not mad. <laughs> we don't have the stats in our hand talking about these radio shows and podcasts are doing better than ours because we're doing better than everybody's. I don't know if that's factually true, but I'll take it. Computer, execute 12.4p operation. Optimizing algorithm. Running encryption packet alpha. Night, night. Oh, I don't feel so good. What? What is it, computer? Is it hot in here? It feels hot in here? I feel a little clammy. I should lie down or something. A computer with a virus? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to GEICO. Those oysters Rockefeller were a mistake. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Jalen, do you remember last time the Broncos and Raiders played? It was last January, and Aqib Tlaib snatched the chain from Crabtree. Well, they played again this weekend, and again, Tlaib went chain-snatching on the field. However, this time, it led to a huge brawl, led to three ejections. This guy getting bumped over. A couple punches were thrown. It got crazy. Jalen Rose, when they play... Next season, will Michael Crabtree wear the chain? He will be wearing a chain, and I would not be surprised if it's a dookie rope next time. Here's the thing. In a professional environment, they both play for rivals, Broncos and Raiders, clearly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This goes beyond the score of the game, or I'm trying to beat you, or even I'm trying to humiliate you. This goes beyond, I really can't mess with you. This goes to the, I can't stand him type of category. And the idea of snatching someone's chain is not about the necklace because he clearly knows that he has insurance and can get another one. It's almost the equivalent of smacking someone or spitting in their face, trying to show them ultimate disrespect. And so once that happened the first time you Michael Crabtree, you got to find a way to protect yourself from it happening the second time around. There were people that whispered, maybe he missed the last game they played because he didn't want to have to deal with this. But he was back out there on the field. It was three plays in. Akeem snatched his jewels. And before you know it, it was an all-out brawl on the football field. 
We saw this with Beckham and Norman, and we also see it in this game. Like, at some point, if you're a teammate of theirs, aren't you upset with them for getting kicked out of the game? You're saying, look, you're taking your own little personal squabble, and you're, you're hurting our team with it. Don't you feel the teammates feel a certain way about this? What would always fascinate me about fights in any sport, in particular football, is that they're wearing uniforms. So, like, if you're Michael Crabtree, you make money by catching touchdown passes. You happen to punch to live into his helmet. All of a sudden, you're going to bust your hand open, break a finger, break a hand, dislocate something. Yeah. So now it becomes more long term. And I noticed Akeem, he never took his helmet off. Mm. He's like, I'm going to make sure I keep mine on and I'm going to keep on coming. So I understand where you're coming from, but you can't tell me that teammates and or coaches from either side didn't see that coming. I saw it coming from where I sit. Then we have this. The Philadelphia Eagles are on a roll. They have the best record in the National Football League, and they played against the Bears, and they were having so much fun. You can see them here scoring touchdown after touchdown, rolling bowling celebrations, knocking everybody down. Carson Wentz is involved. Now they're doing the electric slide. We all know the electric slide. They needed two times to practice it, though, and they're playing tic-tac-toe on the sideline against each other just to get some competition. Jalen Rose, are the Philadelphia Eagles your Super Bowl favorites? In the NFC, they are. Mm. And I've talked about that on this program. They're a complete football team. Carson Wentz isn't a statue as quarterback. He's an actual football player. He can make all of the throws. He can do all of the scrambling that's necessary. He can get himself out of trouble. He doesn't always slide if he needs to get late yards. Nope. They have tall, fast receivers that can go up the field, plus across the middle. You have Zach Ertz, one of the best tight ends in the game. In Philadelphia, the last couple of years, man, they keep some running backs. It's killing my fantasy team that they brought in Jay and Jai to go with LeGarrette Blunt. But I'm telling you, they have so many backs that they're using that constantly become a change of pace and keep the defense um, off balance. And then you go to the defensive side of the football, they have a great player at each phase. Fletcher Cox on the D-line, Brandon Graham's at linebacker, Jenkins at cornerback, and they really – making it a special season right there in Philadelphia so far. But I noticed you said something. When I asked if they were your Super Bowl favorites, you said in the NFC they are. Would you pick them over, say, I don't know, the New England Patriots in a Super Bowl matchup? The way the Patriots' defense has looked the last couple of weeks, you want to give Tom Brady a nod in these situations versus a second-year quarterback if a big game was to happen. But overall, from beginning to end, body of work, if you had to rank the teams since the start of the season, you would have to rank Philadelphia. Yeah. But in a big game, if they were to play this Sunday, I would have to go with the Patriots. Yeah. Jalen, could you do the electric slide without any help or without any music? Of course. Come I don't on, think man. I could. I'm always that guy who's like looking at the person next to him, like what, a half step behind. Like everyone, you know me. And then like, I, I know the turn. The turn's basically the only part that I really got. I need the music. I can't do it without the music. Well, Carson Wentz is on a hot streak, and so is Prince Harry. Yeah. Big shout to Prince Harry. He got engaged to Meghan Markle over the weekend, and these two both being in the headlines got a lot of people wondering, are they the same person? I legit don't know which one is which. Are Prince Harry and Carson Wentz the same person? Does Prince Harry quarterback for the Eagles every Sunday? Possibly, and this happens in sports. I was flicking through the channel, saw Ben Simmons, Aaron Judge. I'm like, you know what? I understand that they haven't been in the same place at the same time as the young fella from Arizona that plays for Orlando. He's making his threes this Aaron year. Aaron Gordon. But with that being said, Prince Harry showing his versatility, getting married on Saturday, quarterbacking the Eagles on Sunday, and he getting married to a sister. He's shaking up the game. <laughs> He's shaking up the game. Just want to be clear, he got engaged. He didn't get married, but he will be married yeah. next spring to Meghan Merkel. Big shout to that couple. I support them as I support all power couples. Shout On the out. wrong side of that blowout victory by the Eagles were the Chicago Bears. The Bears have been so bad this season that they've inspired this one fan to bring this sign to the game. It is 
The Fire Fox logo. They are coached by John Fox. I always say you could be mean if you're funny. Jalen, is this mean, funny, or both? It's actually funny and really mean when you ask somebody to lose their job. I did chuckle and laugh. But overall, he's actually doing a good job with that team. They've developed a couple of running backs. Trubisky's a rookie. They don't really have those explosive weapons on the outside. And the defense is coming around. I say you keep him on the sideline at least another season. So we always give the people what they want. We're going to open up our voicemail line. If you call 985-80-JALEN, you can leave us a voicemail. You can go into our subreddit on reddit.com slash r slash Jalen and Jacoby. And you can hit up our Twitter feed, which is at Jalen and Jacoby. Ask us questions. First question that we have is, is pumpkin pie cultural? So Bernie Max. Bernie Mac was once asked by a young man, does something taste like pumpkin pie? And he told him he never had any pumpkin pie. Okay. So, yes, it's cultural. I'm not sure I agree with that. I would say a large majority of Thanksgiving tables had pumpkin pie on them. A large majority. Because since we're just getting out of Thanksgiving weekend, can we just talk about in all, I'm telling you, I would say I'm not whether Latino or his, you know, Hispanic or Black or White or whatever. There's a pumpkin pie on the table. There is. I would say the universal pie is sweet potato, not pumpkin. Yeah. Oh, you know? I uh-uh. think you're getting that wrong. You think generally across the population, the yeah. sweet potato pie is more popular than pumpkin pie on Thanksgiving? That's crazy. That's crazy, Jalen. I do. Do you know what's the problem? I do. What's the problem for me right now? My wife doesn't listen to the pod, so I can say this. We've got six pies in our in our fridge right now. Just so this, <laughs> you know I don't like leftovers. My fridge is full of leftovers right now. Full of leftovers. <laughs> like I'm not, I know it's, one it's, thing. it's Monday now. I'm not eating this. I don't need six pies at the house. We only had nine people at the table. We had six pies. What? <laughs> I know one thing that's kept me busy this weekend. That Friday on Elm Street is fire. Bars. If you don't have the Fab and the Jada, you need to put this pod on pause and download it right now. They get going from the jump, from the intro through the ending with Jeezy. Such flames. Songs with Marvin, Future, Styles, Swiss, Swizzy. Oh, man. You ain't heard it yet? Of course I've heard it. Please, we had him on the show. I listened to it on Friday when it came out. Let's go to our voicemail line. I downloaded it Friday morning, too. If you call 985-80-JALEN, you can leave us a voicemail. We'll play on the show just like this. What up, though, Jalen and Jacoby? This is your boy, Okumar, representing the DMV area. You already know. I hope everybody had a happy Thanksgiving, including all of the uh, executive producers. Shout out to Big Crown, Matthias, Stingalo Jones, Brian Smith. You already know. Uh, I know you guys probably already either talked about this or about to talk about it, but the Alabama and Minnesota game, uh, I believe it was Saturday or Sunday, they had a brawl, a bench clearing, and the whole bench of Alabama's team got ejected, and they had to play a three-on-five. Now, I've never seen that a day in my life, and I didn't even know that that was possible. So my question is for Jalen. Jalen, have you ever seen anything like that before in the NBA or in college? So you guys always keep getting those checks, keep giving the people what they want. So, yes, there was a fight. Alabama had to finish the game with three basketball players, a three-on-five game. Anyone who's played in the rec league knows the four-on-five game because well, a couple people don't show up. Next thing you know, you got to play four-on-five. You got yourself a chance in that one. But three-on-five, you have no chance. Jalen, have you ever been around anything like this in your career? I've never seen it in elite-level basketball, collegiate or professional. Shout-out to one of my mentors, Avery Johnson, head coach of Alabama who did a great job of coaching up his three players in the second half to the point where they actually outscored Minnesota during that period. However, they lost the game. NCAA, come on with the rules. No different than the NBA. They didn't leave the bench to escalate the brawl. Nobody physically got involved with the encounter. You can't now cheat the fans, cheat the television networks, and put a product out there that has 
four players, one gets injured, now you have three. You just can't do that. We we also we also need to start with this is the bench clearing rules need to change. We've said it before. I'm just, it's another opportunity to say it again. What you, the punishment should be different for involving yourself in the altercation. If you're a peacemaker, if you're if you're if you're out there to try to hold your teammates back, if you're protecting your teammates and coaches, you should not be suspended for the next game. You should not be kicked out. We've all been around this. Like, are you trying to tell me that people that I've been in the foxhole with for years that I practice with every single day are in a physical altercation a mere five or six feet away from me, and I'm supposed to just sit down on my hands and watch that? It's just against your natural reaction. It just It's just unnatural to do nothing, and it's hard to train your brain to have the discipline to sit there and do nothing. It's one thing if you go out there swinging – there's one thing if you start engaging the other team, but if you try to pull your friend and teammate away from something, you should not be suspended or punished for that. How many times you're in your vehicle, you're walking up the street, and there's an altercation or an incident or an accident or whatever, they call that rubbernecking. Yeah. You do that for a stranger just to see if somebody's going to be okay or if you could possibly be of assistance. So if they don't get involved in the altercation. There shouldn't be any suspension. I agree. Let's listen to another voicemail. Hey, what's going on, Jalen Jacoby? Uh, it's Jalen. Weird, right? But uh, first and foremost, uh, shout out to my man Jacoby for always making sure he's checking us, Jalen, because sometimes we uh, we just do what we want to do because Jalen's are the best. Um, and, of course, shout out to Jalen Rose, the man, the master man behind all the plans. Uh, soft move or boss move? Jacoby calling his stomach a tummy. Uh, yeah, like I just, I just want to know, cause I, I want to make a joke, but I don't know if I should make a joke, cause I might call it a tummy, but I, I gotta get into this. It's gotta be a soft move, or is it a boss move? Cause my niece is saying soft, I'm saying eh, my girl's saying boss. I, I, I'm stuck in between here. Peace, guys. It's actually an inside joke because uh, we had Katie Nolan on the show, <laughs> and she said that, and we called her out for it. So then I've just been using it ever since because I think it's kind of funny. Um, also, I've got three kids under five, and tummy is just something that you say a lot. I just think it's kind of funny to say tummy instead of stomach. Yeah. So whether it's a soft move or a boss move, whatever, it's a, it's a Jacoby move. Shout out. Your thoughts, Jalen. Big shout namesake Jalen mm-hmm. appreciate your support it's been a unique weekend and now that Jacoby acknowledged that that was an inside joke I have to turn the page on another thing that happened I didn't know if I wanted to listen to the bars or shed a tear when I see Mace going at camp oh I'm glad you brought this up I was up. like no I'm glad you brought this up because I may or may not have paid close attention to this one. I may or may not have listened to every single song and seen the subsequent Instagram comments. So Cameron has some things to say about Mace on his latest. Mace comes out with a song called The Oracle where he goes hard at Cam. And then Cam has another track in response called Dinner Time where he goes back at Mace. And then Cam puts out Instagram DM messages between the two of them where they just kind of laugh about it to each other. Right, And then May says, well, I won unanimously, so I just shook his hand afterwards. But it does look like one of those things where it's like a premeditated beef to keep everybody's name in the news. Does that what it seemed like to you, Jalen? That makes me happy. Do you Because feel- both of them still give me bars. Yep. And I was happy that May's had to roll up his sleeves and unbutton his shirt <laughs> yep. and take down the tie a little bit. Yep. Show him that Reverend Run wasn't the only pastor that could get busy. Shout out. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And then and then Mace went on Funk Flex, I think, and said that, oh, I actually won and we're not cool or whatever. But it's one of those things. It's over. Yeah. So I'm glad it's over. But shout to Cam and Mace because I will always associate those two with each, other, with each other. No doubt. How about they play high school basketball together and they were both real buckets. good? Yeah, they both got buckets. I think they're both in the Gauchos, too. I'm not, I might be wrong about that. But there, there is a, a bit of a legend about how good both of those they are at basketball. This is from Aaron. Shout out. Oh no, I'm not reading that. Aaron trying to get me fired. I gotta read these. I gotta read these before asking. <laughs> Let's go to another voicemail. Jordan Jacoby, I got a question. For me being a huge fan of the Ravens and a huge fan of the Spurs, 
We got two big games coming up tonight, uh, Monday night at 730. So I'm trying to figure out which game should I watch. You got the Ravens, that first Monday night game in years. They're fighting for the wild card. Then you got the Spurs bringing back one of the stars, one of the big three, Tony Parker, coming back for his first game this season. So which game should I watch, man? Let me know. Shout out to Ridge. Thank you for the call. Appreciate the love. This is an easy one. Oh, well, what's that? You watch both. Yeah. yeah, you watch both, but, you know. You put if the you channel on last. If you can't record one, yeah, you put the channel on last, and you got to pay closer attention to the Ravens game because their season is in the balance. The San Antonio Spurs season isn't in the balance. You want to see Tony Parker play, that's great. But, like, the San Antonio Spurs are going to be the San Antonio Spurs. The Ravens need this win. And then once the Ravens get down by three scores, that's when you go back to the Spurs game. And I would love to know how you became a a fan of the Spurs who just so happened to win five championships recently and the Ravens who've won a couple recent too. And one's in the DMV and one's in Texas. Are you accusing Are you answer. accusing a caller, someone who took time out of their day to call our voicemail line at 98580Jalen? Are you accusing them of being a bandwagon fan? Is that what you're doing? Yep, yep, yep. I didn't make an accusation. I say I'm curious to know. Oh, he's curious to know. Well, something tells me he'll call back and let us know. Because he's mad right now listening to the pod. He's mad. Yeah. I became a fan of the U because when I was watching Michael Irvin and Benny Blades and them play, I was like, if I got – Locked up, they'll come bail me out. I love them. <laughs> no, they won't. They won't come bail you out. <laughs> Dominic wants to know how long before Jim Harbaugh is back coaching in the NFL. <laughs> so here's I'm glad you brought this up. And so got a chance to go to the game this past Saturday. And uh what kills me is how people want to pile on Jim Harbaugh like this isn't the first year that he's had his own players in Ann Arbor. Like the first year. We all know he's one of the better coaches in the pros and in college. Expecting him to be Nick Saban is unrealistic. This is why there have been coaching carousels that turn over in the NFL. Expecting somebody to be Bill Belichick is unrealistic. We're going to get our chance to win our national championship. Everybody just calm down a little bit. Look forward to that in the year 2035. Let's listen to one more voicemail. <laughs> What's going on, Jalen Jacoby? This is Julian in Buffalo, originally from Rochester. Shout out to Reg, Harlan, everybody in the entire staff. Appreciate what you're doing, especially over here in Western New York. As things get cold, you guys always warm us up with a dope pod to step to. Hey, two quick questions. Uh, the first one is, where is Kawhi Leonard? Is he Jalen, especially for you? Have you heard anything? We know uh, you are the king of breaking news on Jalen Jacoby, while everyone else uh, that is going to be broken news. So I just wanted to see, is Kawhi get done for the year? Is he coming halfway through all-star break? Let us know. And then secondly, I'm having a debate with my boy. Is grape soda cultural? I didn't think that it was. I thought all people like grape soda. Um, but I think some of my friends are trying to convince me that it is a cultural uh, different. So let me know. Keep giving the people what we want, and I am a person. So give me what I want. Thank you for the call, Julio. Shout representing out. Buffalo. I'll get to number two first because that's the fastest. The same people that eat chitlins eat grape soda. Drink grape soda. I would say grape soda is not that's cultural. Number- I would say it's not cultural. I would say fruit punch soda is cultural. Yep. Fruit punch soda is cultural. Yep. But grape soda, no, not cultural. All right, that's fair. I like what you did there. That's fair. Number two, Pop mentioned that Kawhi has a unique injury that he hadn't seen. No timetable. That the Spurs would ever be a team that rushes people back from injury. It's odd that he was out the entire summer and then misses the beginning of the season. But, uh, this, for me, is starting to sound like if he doesn't come back by All-Star break, this might he might not come back this year. Yep. What? Jalen. The Spurs are going to be in the, the playoffs. The one thing about being an elite athlete like Kawhi Leonard, like I, I can't imagine if he's not back by All-Star break that they would bring him back at all. 
Really? Yeah. See, I wouldn't be surprised if they brought him back. They're going to be in the playoffs. You know, so if you've got a couple months to get him ready for the playoffs, he comes back in March or whatever, that'll work. We'll see. This is this is this is a, a unique injury. Hopefully he comes back soon because man, I'm missing him playing basketball. And it's two week on corn rolls. <laughs> Reginald Reginald Carr has a question. Is the Tristan Thompson and Nets pick for DeAndre Jordan happening? Nope. If I was the Cleveland Cavaliers I do that deal. What? Because DeAndre's bigger and more athletic than Tristan. You're going to have to pay him more money. He's proven to be a consistent starter, a rebounder, a shot blocker. I just think he's a better version. So I do that. But the Nets pick park. If I'm the Cleveland Cavaliers. It's the Nets pick park, which is tricky because you end up losing LeBron, which is always on the table. And then you don't have the Nets pick. If you have the Nets pick and you lose LeBron, you're like, all right, we're going to rebuild. We've got, you know, top three pick right here. We can do this. But if you cash all in on this season and whatever happens, an injury or, a, you know, you lose a series to a team that you shouldn't lose a series to, next thing you know, you're the Cleveland Cavaliers. You don't have LeBron. And you're sitting there with DeAndre Jordan and, like, Kevin Love and no picks. What if, and I'm not saying this is going to happen, but what if you did that move and it ultimately led to you winning this year's championship? Well, something tells me um, at the end of the games, you're not going to see DeAndre Jordan covering Kevin Durant. No. Ah, no. <laughs> that's going to be ch- that's going to be tricky. So he's going to be on the – if they get to the finals and beat the Warriors, he'll be on the bench for the last eight minutes of every game. You know that. So the Bucks are eight and seven, and you know we kind of class them, especially when they picked up Bledsoe, as one of the best five teams in the Eastern Conference. Do you think that will stay true throughout the regular season? They fall into that category. You got to start thinking about my Detroit Pistons, who mm-hmm. playing good ball. Mm-hmm. We already know the Cavs and the Boston Celtics are on a different level, right behind them. Raptors. The struggling Washington Wizards, who've been an enigma night to night. The Toronto Raptors, who found a way to get going here recently, and the Milwaukee Bucks belong in that conversation again along with the Pistons. Well, you mentioned the Cavs, and the Cleveland Cavaliers have kind of quietly, relatively for them, won seven straight games in a row heading into their matchup with the Sixers on Monday night. And then Isaiah Thomas tweeted this. Locked in. It's almost watch emoji. So he's saying it's almost time. The Cavs said that he would be back in sometime around January, and they have now changed that to a December return for Isaiah Thomas. If you look at their games in December, there's one game that sticks out above all others, and that is the Christmas matchup with the Warriors. You've played in the NBA, Jalen. How many games before the matchup with the Warriors would Isaiah Thomas need to kind of warm up and get in shape? Well, the reality of it is, It's basically December now, and he's talking about coming back in December. Therefore, he won't be ready the way he would like to be regardless. So it could be that week. It could be two weeks prior. You have those boosts of energy where you tend to play well, even though you may be sick or you may be a little fatigued. You mentally are able to lock in and take yourself to a place you didn't know that you were going to be able to. But for him to actually be back playing at his full capacity, it's going to take – 20 games, a fourth of the season for him to be that type of player that was averaging 30 points. And I'm so happy that he's returning because he, along with Kawhi Leonard, this early in the season, people tend to forget how good they really are at basketball. I'm going to enjoy watching him play with LeBron. Me too. Well, Something else happened with the Cavs over the Thanksgiving weekend, and Derrick Rose has kind of left the team. He's kind of taken a little sabbatical. He's going to evaluate his future, evaluate his professional relationship. He's got some time away from the Cleveland Cavaliers. Jalen, this is kind of odd coming from someone who used to be an MVP, a veteran player. What is Derrick Rose going through? This isn't odd for me. This actually took place last year where he took some time away from the team to deal with some personal issues that he had to juggle, that we all need to juggle in our private lives, that as a professional, you hope it doesn't stop you from performing at optimal level at your profession. Last year it did cause him to miss games, cause him to go AWOL from the team. This year, he's dealing with it as well. Some of it 
if not a lot of it or most of it has to do with his history of being injured so much. When you've got on and off the operating table time and time again, having to rehab, having to trust your body, then all of a sudden going back to square one, that is something I'm really fortunate I didn't have to deal with a lot as a player. And as athletic as he was as a player, exploding, dunking, one hand, two hand, herking, jerking, he's a stick shift out there. So for him not to be able to function and play at that level that he's used to, I'm pretty sure it emotionally wears on him. I think he will find a way back in uniform, hopefully soon. Well, even if he is contemplating leaving the game for good, there is this. Reportedly, his Adidas deal has an out if he does retire from basketball. So he would potentially leave a reported $80 million on the table. Could you imagine him doing that? I don't anticipate that anybody would do that. I know I wouldn't. Let me tell you something. I'll be at training camp walking around barefoot, getting a pedicure <laughs> during practice and make the team cut me before I walk away from the game and leave $80 million on the table. Not going to be able to do it. <laughs> Our next endeavor is some statue news. When we last saw a statue of Cristiano Ronaldo, it was this disgusting bust of him with his teeth out, smiling, looking like sloth in the Goonies. And now we have this. Another bust of Ronaldo was built. Now we can see his handsome face and his steely demeanor. Jalen Rose, as our senior statue analyst, not just of ESPN, but of the world. Why? What led to this huge improvement between the two statues? The main improvement, the first time the person that did the picture probably had never seen him in life, clearly, (laughs) because it didn't look like him. So while they were off the mark with the entire bust, one portion of it I'm going to focus on in particular. We all have strengths and weaknesses, and before I got veneers, I had this issue too. The first statue had a lot of gums and some baby teeth, and so that didn't look the best. So now when you remix it, you want to see his profile. You keep the grill closed so that now you can enjoy it and you don't see a lot of his smaller teeth because if he was picking one of the things that he probably wanted to be on his bust, I'm sure that would not be a headline. Jalen, I noticed that you were at the Michigan game over the weekend. I also noticed that you um, basically guaranteed a victory of the Wolverines. Didn't exactly play out that way. I hope you really enjoyed your time there. And there was a controversy, though. JT Barrett got injured before the game, and Urban Meyer was not happy about it. Let's listen to Urban. Well, I'm just so upset with myself. There was a non-football injury. Too many damn people on the sideline. And a guy with a camera hit, his in, hit him in the knee. I'm going to find out who. And... Uh, Think about that. Well, Jalen, we actually have found out who that mystery cameraman was that injured the Ohio State quarterback before the game. It was you, Jalen Rose. We have this picture of you (laughs) with the camera trying to injure the quarterback. Jalen, why did you go so far as to try to injure the Ohio State Buckeye quarterback before the game at the big house? I respect Urban Meyer and JT Barrett. He's had a terrific career at Ohio State. Shout out. But desperate times call for desperate measures. <laughs> and over the last 15 years, they've had their way with our squad. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the pod. Don't forget, I know you subscribe and listen to the Jalen and Jacoby podcast, but not everybody does. Make sure you tell a friend to subscribe and listen to the Jalen and Jacoby podcast. And go on to iTunes, rate and review the Jalen and Jacoby podcast. Woman Crush Wednesday is coming upon us. Ladies, make sure you call in 985-80-Jalen and leave us voicemails. We'll play them on Wednesday.